Hello, this is a demo of the interactive bolted detection tool in Radex Pro, which is located here in interactive tools. Let's set up the module parameters and then we'll do the interactive bolted detection. First, we need to set the input data set. The module takes 3D migrated seismic cubes. I have a small cube here for testing. For the correction of input waveform parameter, I refer you to the manual. Basically, it helps to make the diffraction waveform symmetric with a defined maximum around the actual bolt allocation. Uh, the phase only correction is the default, but here I think phase and amplitude correction works better. The next part of the menu is the time limits. Uh, they allow you to limit your search for boulders to a specific time interval. On this cube, we'll just search between just below the seabed of 53 milliseconds to 75 milliseconds. Um, finally, we need to set up the data set for what's called the boulder detection attribute. I will explain the attribute uh, meaning later, uh, but now we have to just create the empty data set. Demo attribute positive. Uh, the module allows you to search for the ball, for the uh, anomalies which have uh, higher impedance than the surrounding subsurface and we call them positive boulders and the anomalies which have negative impedance uh, re relative to the surrounding subsurface which we call negative boulders. Here we'll only search for the positive ones. Uh, these are the defaults for the interactive parameters in the module. Uh, we can tweak them interactively, so we'll just keep them as they are. And finally, we need to set up the module scheme right here. Uh, the module scheme is an object which allows you to save your work and when you exit the module, it will help you to return back to exactly the same step where you stopped working. So we'll create a scheme demo. All right, so I think we're good to go and we can start the module. Okay, here's how the window of the module looks like. On the right, you can see the seismic data set, which is displayed uh, in a, like a view from top, slice by slice. You can scroll through the slices here interactively. There are also some zoom in, zoom out tools and the tool to set up the scale. And also there is a parameter window for the view settings. On the left, there are the parameters for the boulder detection. There are two steps in the workflow we propose for boulder detection. The first one is called the attribute computation. Uh, the algorithm uh, inside the module creates an uh, attribute by an image process processing technique which detects objects of a specific shape or size on a seismic cube. Here you can see that there is a, first let's go to a slice in the seismic where we have well-defined boulders, for example, here on 54.3, maybe 54.4 will be even better. Yep. And here is the window for the display of the attribute. And you can see that uh, on this boulder detection attribute, the boulders uh, have higher values and we can set up the approximate shape of the boulders we're looking for and the attribute will change. I'm pressing enter when I'm changing the boulder radius and you can tweak this depending on your data and the sizes of the boulders you are looking for. In this particular case uh, I found out that 1.5 meter radius is a good place to start. Uh, this is only an approximate boulder size. Later, we'll be able to filter out the boulders 
by the specific sizes. Okay, after we have set up the boulder radius, we can compute the boulder detection attribute for the whole cube. And then we will use this uh, boulder detection attribute for thresholding, basically to classify the whole, the, each sample in the subsurface into boulder or surrounding medium. Here's the threshold value. By default, it's 0.9, and we can tweak it. We'll decrease it until we have highlighted all the boulders on this particular slice. It is OK if we will highlight some of the false positives, because we can remove the false positive later by the filters in the next step. And you can turn on and off the boulder contours to uh, try to analyze the results of your classification. And at this step, uh, we're good to go to the second stage and uh, filter out the boulders and generate the output. Between the steps one and two, the module conducts a 3D labeling of the boulders, giving each of the boulders its specific number and computing its properties and sizes, etc. Uh, and then after this, we can do the boulder filtering by shape. So you can see there is a set of filters which allow you to remove the boulders if they don't correspond to your understanding of the expected boulder size. And I will turn off the filters and then we'll go through them one by one. Uh, the first filter filters out the boulders by the aspect ratio of the 2D projections onto the surface. Um, you can see that by selecting the uh, range of the aspect ratios between 1 and 3, I'm removing these elongated bodies and I can even probably decrease the maximum to 2.5 and remove more of them. Then um, there is also the horizontal size filter, which allows you to select the boulders according to their horizontal size, which we will turn off for this particular example. There is the third filter, which allows you to remove uh, the boulders, which are too large along the time axis or too small. Here we'll basically remove only those boulders which are only on one slice by selecting these parameters. And the final two filters uh, allow you to set the range of values uh, for the number of 3D cells in a boulder or the number of 2D cells in the boulder's projection onto the surface. Here we'll just use the last filter, we'll remove all the boulders which only consist of one cell of one inline cross line and the maximum will set to 40. Or maybe even, I think, yeah, 40. Right, so at this stage we have uh, finalize the filtering out of the boulders and you can see that the number of uh, false positive has decreased significantly and you can see the boulders which have been filtered out are displayed in dark red color. Um, we can also do some interactive editing. For example, there is a button here which uh, allows us to create new boulders. For example, here we can see that there has been a boulder which has been filtered out, but which seems to be a true boulder. And to instead of trying to go through the filters again, we can just manually create um, another boulder on top of it, so that it goes into our output table and the map. And we can create a boulder which has the diameter of one meter. You can see it. And also, there is a eraser tool which allows us to remove the boulders, uh, which are false positives but have not been filtered out. And this one seems to be a part of some kind of a structure uh, and seems to be a false positive. So I can just filter it out by an eraser tool. 
Okay, and that ba basically ends uh, the interactive setting of the parameters. You can scroll through the slices while you tweak the parameters. And you can see that, for example, here on another slice, we have selected some of the boulders, this one, this one, this one. And on the deeper slices, we have selected some boulders and we have also removed this false positive anomalies related to the structure in the seismic cube. And finally, uh, to finish our work, we, need, we can first look at the map of the boulders. This is a, an interactive map which is always connected to the uh, boulders, boulder labeled cube. Uh, in the background and it displays the view from top uh, on the survey side and it highlights the boulders and the color of the boulders corresponds to the depth. You can see that darker colored boulders are deeper. Uh, and this is the uh, depth here is the depth to the top of the boulder. And the main deliverable of the module is the table of the boulders. We can output it as the demo table to a text file. And we will inspect it now. I choose to import the table into Excel and then study it in Excel. Let's open it. The table is located here, demo table txt. Uh, Excel allows you to select the format of the columns here and uh, the default tab separation parameters are okay and they work well for this particular table. Uh, the step three of the input visit um, allows us to select the columns we don't want in case there are some columns we don't want. For example, here the boulder number column may be uh, not needed for you and you can mark it as uh, the one to skip. There are some properties of the boulders in the map like the centroid coordinates, the uh, centroid two-way time, the top two-way time and the bottom two-way time of the boulder and the span along the time axis the sizes, the aspect ratio, the numbers of the cells, and the bounding box parameters in the end. Uh, for example, let's say that we don't need the bounding box parameters here, so we can mark them all as the ones to skip. And here is our table. We can just format all the cells to auto-fit the column width. And you can see, basically, this is the table here, and we have found about one 133 boulders. All of the properties are here and then we can just save it as Excel and use it as a deliverable for a project. And that's it for today. Thanks.